In microeconomics, this point here, equilibrium point, is an important point. Equilibrium price is the price where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded and no shortages or surpluses exist in the market. So we like it, usually, when the market is in equilibrium. But there are even more compelling arguments as to why market equilibrium is such a desirable place for the market to arrive at. To explain these ideas, we need to talk about the concepts of consumer surplus, producer surplus, and social surplus. I'm Mr. Racine. Welcome to today's episode of <coughs> Economics Videos That Don't Suck. Look at this thing. To illustrate the concept of consumer and producer surplus, let's consider a simple example, a used car market. Let's say that we have three people who want to sell their car. The first is Jerry Lundegaard. Jerry needs to get at least $10,000 to be willing to sell his car. Second, we have Doc, who's also trying to sell his car. Doc requires at least $20,000 to be willing to sell his car. And finally, Cameron is also selling his car, and he requires at least $30,000 to be willing to sell his car. We also have three buyers of cars. The first is Clark. Clark is willing to pay at most $50,000 to buy a car. Marty is also looking to buy a car, and he's willing to pay at most $40,000. And finally, we have Ferris, and his maximum buying price is $30,000. We can use this data to plot market supply and market demand on a diagram. If the price in the market for cars is $10,000, then only Jerry is going to be willing to sell his car, and only one car will be supplied to the used car market. At a market price of $20,000, both Jerry and Doc become willing to sell their car, so quantity supplied of cars is two, and if the price is $30,000, then all three sellers in the market will sell their car. On the demand side, if the price is $50,000, only Clark is going to buy a car, so quantity demanded is only one at a price of $50,000. At a price of $40,000, both Clark and Marty will buy a car, so two cars will be demanded, and finally, at a price of $30,000, all three buyers become willing to buy the car. So it seems clear that market price is $30,000, three cars get bought, three cars get sold, and everyone is happy. Equilibrium is rad. Okay, on a side note, I realize it's ridiculous that a station wagon is being sold at the same price as a DeLorean. Technically, all three of these cars should be identical products. But if I'm bored, you're definitely bored, so this is more fun, right? Okay, just deal with it. We can analyze this used car market to understand the idea of consumer surplus. In this market, the market price is $30,000, three cars get sold for $30,000, and three cars are bought at $30,000. But Clark was willing to pay $50,000 for the car, and he only paid $30,000. This difference between the price that a consumer is willing to pay for a product and what they actually pay is what we call consumer surplus. In this example, Clark gets $20,000 of consumer surplus because he was willing to pay $50,000 and he only paid $30,000. Similarly, Marty gains $10,000 of consumer surplus. He was willing to pay $40,000, and he only paid $30,000 for his car, extracting $10,000 of consumer surplus from his transaction. Ferris was willing to pay $30,000. He paid $30,000. He didn't get any consumer surplus, but there's nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly fine to pay the price that you're willing to pay to get the thing that you want. So in this market, total consumer surplus is $30,000. $20,000 to Clark and $10,000 to Marty. In market demand curves, we represent consumer surplus as the area below the demand curve, above price, and to the left of the quantity that consumers actually buy. The area of consumer surplus, which is often a triangle, represents the total difference between the price that all consumers in the market would have been willing to pay for the product and what they actually paid. To calculate consumer surplus, we calculate the area of the shape which represents it. On this demand curve, if the market price is $10, the quantity demanded will be 100. The base is 100, 
the height is 25 minus 10 or $15, one half base times height, total consumer surplus is $750. We can also consider the difference between what sellers need to be willing to produce and sell their product and what they actually receive. When the market price is $30,000, all three sellers sell their car. But Jerry would have been willing to sell his car for only $10,000. So Jerry gets an extra $20,000 of surplus. In this case, we're going to call it producer surplus. Producer surplus is the difference between the price that producers need to receive in order to be willing to sell their product and what they actually get when they sell it. Jerry gets $20,000 of producer surplus because he sold the car for $20,000 more than his minimum selling price. Similarly, Doc gets $10,000 of producer surplus. He would have been willing to sell his car for $20,000 and he actually got $30,000. Finally, Cameron doesn't get any producer surplus. He needed 30,000, he got 30,000, but that's fine. On a market supply curve, we represent producer surplus as the area above supply, below price, and to the left of the total quantity that producers sell. On this supply curve, if market price is $10 and quantity supplied is 100, then the area of this triangle would represent total producer surplus, and it can be calculated as 1 half times 10 times 100 for a total of $500 of producer surplus. So when we put supply and demand on the same diagram, now we can easily identify equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity, but also consumer surplus, which is the area below demand, above equilibrium price, and to the left of equilibrium quantity, and also producer surplus, the area above supply, below equilibrium price, and to the left of equilibrium quantity. If we add consumer surplus and producer surplus together, this is what we call social surplus. And in well-functioning markets, there is no combination of price and quantity that will yield a higher social surplus than equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity, which is another reason of why we like equilibrium so much in economics. If market price is for some reason above equilibrium price, then this is quantity supplied and this is quantity demanded. Uh, but in this case, the limiting factor is quantity demanded. It doesn't matter how much businesses want to sell. All that matters is how much people are willing to buy because producers don't get surplus from something that they can't sell. So if this is the price, then this is the total quantity that consumers are going to buy. This then is consumer surplus, the area above price, and below demand, and to the left of the amount that consumers buy. And this area is producer surplus, the area above supply and below price, and to the left of the quantity that producers can actually sell, which is the amount that people want to buy. It doesn't matter that they want to sell this much, people aren't gonna buy that much. If you add consumer and producer surplus together, we have social surplus with this higher than market equilibrium price, and clearly the area of social surplus here is less than what social surplus would be at equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. If market price is below equilibrium price, then this is quantity demanded and this is quantity supplied. But in this case, the limiting factor is quantity supplied. It doesn't matter how much people want to buy. You can only buy what is actually for sale. You don't get surplus for something that you can't buy. So as a result, this area becomes producer surplus, the area above supply and below price to the left of the amount that they sell. And this area is consumer surplus, the area below demand, above price, and to the left of the amount that consumers are actually able to buy what is available in the market. Again, we add these two areas together. This is social surplus when prices are low, and the area of social surplus is clearly less than what it would be if we were at equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. In well-functioning markets, social surplus is maximized at equilibrium. There's no other price and quantity that will yield a higher total consumer and producer surplus. <laughs> Okay, so this has been consumer surplus, producer surplus, and social surplus. 
Consumer surplus is defined as the difference between what consumers are willing to pay for a product and what they actually pay. On a diagram, it's represented as the area below demand, above price, and to the left of the quantity that consumers buy. Producer surplus is defined as the difference between the price that producers need to receive in order to be willing to sell their product and what they actually receive. On a diagram, it's represented as the area above supply, below price, and to the left of the quantity that producers actually sell. Social surplus is the sum of producer and consumer surplus. In well-functioning markets, social surplus is maximized at equilibrium. There's no other combination of price and quantity that will result in a higher total social surplus. But wait, there's more! We like equilibrium for even another reason, and that is related to the concept of allocative efficiency, which is also super important and will be the topic of our next video. See you there. Hey, what's going on? I hope you liked this video and it helped clarify some of the stuff you're working on in your current economic studies. If you're looking for more resources to help you with AP economics, IB economics, intro level university economics, economics teaching resources, one, go check out our website, economics videos that don't suck, evtds.com, for access to our entire catalog of economics videos, as well as practice questions, answers, and even entire mock exams. Two, be sure to subscribe to this channel, economics videos that don't suck, so you can get immediate access to all of our new videos as they're released, probably mirroring your economic studies right now.